and salutations all you friends and family, fans and followers of the Zeta Nation. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, thank you for joining us here for episode 62 of The Revolution. I am your host with the most from the east to the west coast, like peanut butter on your breakfast toast, Emperor Zeta. And I'm coming to you here, as always, from the fortress of solitude in Etobicoke, Ontario, Canada. So this week we have a very quiet episode, just our regular segments for you this week, which gives me a little bit of time to talk to you about the Stanley Cup playoffs. Now they finished off this week, we saw the Boston Bruins versus the Chicago Blackhawks in an original six matchup, and the Chicago Blackhawks on the game winning goal by Dave Bolin take the Stanley Cup. Now, both teams played a fantastic series. I will give it up to Boston, even though they whooped my Penguins. Boston kicked it up to another level in the playoffs, played their asses off, and they deserve to be in the finals, but they did come up a bit short. That's what happens when you mess with someone from Etobicoke, especially a mimical boy like Boland himself. Big ups to number 36. Congratulations on that game-winning goal and getting the first star of the night. Anyways, that is enough from me, so let's get on with the show. Rock and roll, baby! And here we go. It's Anthony's five, five and a half months old now. He's sleeping better through the night. Now he usually sleep six or seven hours. He has got more balance, sitting up by himself. He is still laughing like crazy. He laughs a lot more than Pat. He loves to blow raspberries. He eats like a champ. Pretty soon he's going to be on solid. He'll start being on baby food. Time is going by very, very fast. And I can just imagine when he starts on, on solid foods, his diapers stink now. He can start wearing nose plugs. Anthony with his no no. They, they love to play in. There's a special seat on Nemo's lap. Uh, when it comes to Grandma, you know, I love seeing her, but nothing compared to what, what he's like when he sees Catherine. Catherine is just like, oh my goodness, he fights for her attention. He loves her attention. She doesn't need to say anything. All she do is look at him and smile, and he's just, whatever his troubles were, as long as his sister's talking to him or smiling at him, he's in seventh heaven. Wasn't getting any younger, it was a sober thought. So have another drink and give me all you got. Look at this! Whoa. All by himself! Yeah. Best in the world! <laughs> <laughs> No! 
this week was actually pretty good. I actually enjoyed it, which is a first in a while. But both Money in the Bank ladder matches are set. For the WWE title, it's going to be an entire face match. And for the World Heavyweight Championship, it's an entire heel match. So CM Punk killed it as always this week. He actually made one of the primetime players look like they could wrestle. Him and Paul Heyman hugged and made up, but no appearance of the Beast. But Paul Heyman did send his lackey, Curtis Axel, down to the ring to help Punk out. Something that Punk was not so happy with, showing the slow burn they're trying to do to make him a face. But with the pop that Punk is getting, there's no way that he can't be a face. I'm just waiting for Curtis Axel to turn on him or for Punk to knock Curtis Axel out in the middle of the match to set up a match next week for Raw with Punk vs. the Intercontinental Champion where Heyman will finally fully turn on his best friend. So Mark Henry and John Cena speechified again this week. Both of them went out and talked. Neither one of them wrestled. I don't know why the WWE Champion never seems to have to wrestle when it's Cena. This feud is just filler till they can get Daniel Bryan to win that briefcase and take out John Cena at SummerSlam. How good was the match between Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton? That was fantastic, old school, attitude era kind of a no disqualification match. Love the innovation with the weapons and how Daniel Bryan used the candlestick to make his no lock even more potent. Daniel Bryan is the hottest thing in wrestling right now. They need to give him a serious run with the WWE title. It'll be a great feud between him and Cena, especially because they're both banging a Bella. Yes! 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 So the Shield has beaten every top star in the company, hammered them down, beat them up, thrown them through tables. So now WWE is going to put the Usos and a returning Christian in a feud against the Shield. The Usos, really? I mean, yeah, they're great wrestlers, and it's nice to see three Samoans in the ring at the same time when they're fighting Roman Reigns. But the Usos, come on! Those guys are getting a push after being buried since the day they debuted. Christian and Dean Ambrose though, should light it up and light it up large. I just wish that they would give Zack Ryder another shot at the U.S. title. I think him and Dean Ambrose could work a great program together. So speaking of Zack Ryder, once again, he was absent on Raw and on SmackDown. I think the only time you're going to see the Long Island IZ is when he's on Superstars, jobbing to everyone. And his boy, the Big O, got a tryout with TNA this week on their gut check. He was by far the better wrestler of the two in the match, but yet he was eliminated and the other guy went to the judges? I am serious, bro! TNA proved once again why it is a terrible promotion by not picking up the big O. Now the rumor is, is that he's already got a WWE contract and that they're sending him down to developmental, which I'm hoping and praying means that they'll bring him up within six months and him and Zack Ryder can tear the WWE apart. Who knows, maybe Zack Ryder will turn heel, take out one of the guys in one of the Money in Bank ladder matches and walk away with the briefcase, holding out hope that somehow he finds his way into one of those Money in the Bank ladder matches. Because we all know Zack Ryder is so money. She was a motherfucker. Hi! No. Mama, I can't talk. I don't want to know. It's so cool. Get no, doing no, something. Like the team.
Hello, people. It's comic book day, that's right. And I'm here with the monkey. And Timmy and Mommy and Papa and Sister. So we're headed down to Excalibur Comics. Wow. We're going to see the prophet and the expert. Oh, we're going to find out what they have to say today. We have everyone together today. And even Anthony brought a special stuffed animal with himself today. A brand new Spider-Man toy. That's my boy. So, we will... See you soon, people. So we made it. We are back down here at Excalibur Comics. And unfortunately, I have to bring the monkey up the steps of doom. Steps of doom. And look who we ran into. Okay. So Fred is down here today. We know that for sure. So we'll see you guys inside. This is Excalibur Comics, 3030 Blur Street West, upstairs above the Kingsway Theater. Oh my god. No Big Mike yet. Don't rub it in. So we're just hoping to see Big Mike to ask him how his Bruins did in the finals. <laughs> First of all, I just want to mention that Jane Galafini passed away, but there was another person of worthwhile interest that, that passed away, which is his name was Richard Matheson. He had been a well-known for writing a number of, of books, famous of which is I Am Legend. Uh, as well, he did a, a number of stories for the Twilight Zone. That he did the adaptation of of uh, the Night Stalker uh, with uh, Carl Kochak. And it's a pity that the media sometimes ignores people that did have a significant part in the history of television. The thing I will always recommend each and every time will be the Hawkeyes. They're worthwhile getting because they're fun, they're light, and they're enjoyable. They're done differently, shall we say. Again, I kind of like the, the style, the look of the book. The other thing, too, is the Age of Ultron. Uh, this is like a, a point one, a point one, whatever. Again, it's with Henry Penn and his life and stuff. So I'm not too crazy about the artwork, but the story looks extreme, so it's worthwhile for the story itself. Let's get to another well done book. Justice League, they're concluding the storyline with this one one shot with Captain Marvel and again, uh, Gary Frank of beautiful in terms of the stuff done here. And I just love his work. And it's always worthwhile picking up his material. It's just good. He knows, the man knows how to draw his comp. And Jeff John, one of the best writers in comic books. And not to forget the other Justice League. Okay, with Jeff John and Death as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is also another intriguing book. It's a pity that uh, David Finch has left the book. He's going to be doing a, a mini series. Nicely done uh, storyline in the new Justice League of America, which is, of course, setting up the Trinity Wars, which we're going to be seeing pretty soon. Good old Daredevil. Mark Wade uh, does a great job writing the series, so I would recommend that you pick up the, the Mark Wade Daredevil because basically there's a lot of interesting stuff that goes on with this book. Recommend it tremendously. They did a very good job. Friends? They did a good job. They fell short. Chicago actually did a good job playing against Char. They figured how to beat Char. They just said Vic will go around and smack Char because then, and then Lucic tried to do something about it, but couldn't run it. So they figured out once you once you figure out Char. Uh, you're pretty much, you're good to go. I'm wearing my, new, my Trinidad and Tobago soccer jersey. Here, here's a conspiracy for you. Back in 1976, the Trinidad team had to beat Haiti to advance to the World Cup. They go to Haiti to win this game to advance to the World Cup. First ever time. They scored six goals against Haiti, Haiti's two, but they lost the game 2-1. The refs call back five goals of Trinidad and Tobago's scores. And then that game is really fixed. Because soon after that, FIFA fired the two referees for, for fixing the game. And they were banned for life. So here, Trinidad had to just win that game, which they, they did, 6-2. But they only lost 2-1. They, lost they called back five of the goals. So you see, some of these games are fixed. Just like that uh, Boston-Chicago. I bet you all the money went to Boston. Shut the fuck up, bro. The <laughs> Chicago one. Because my theory is, if a team loses money, especially a team they want to gain money, even if Boston went to seven games, they wouldn't even make money this year. Same with, same with Jersey. They were losing tons of money. And they ended up in the finals. Toronto will never win a game because they make too much money. You have to actually lose money for the NHL to actually fix the games to make it, make it to the final. Talk about fixing. The banking and everything is fixed. The stocks, everything. You'll be looking at Rolling Stone magazines. Every financial game is fixed. Uh, the banking, the stocks, gold, everything. 
a year or two ago they were shorting gold and if gold went up the <laughs> banks would almost go bankrupt especially JP Morgan and, and uh, HSBC uh, because they, they forced the, the, the price to go down by selling all these shorts now the shorts are coming back so they had to bring down the gold price the silver price ironically as they made tons of money the last few months as they hammered gold and silver price these same banks now are, are buying long on gold, meaning they expected to go up since they hammered it so much. These banks are actually crippled the, the uh, silver and gold market are now going to bump their way up. So where has the time gone? Because another week of the Zeta Nation here is done. Thank you for joining us for another week of the revolution. And come back, as always, right here next week for a brand new episode right here on YouTube. Go back and check out every single one of my other episodes right here on YouTube. And subscribe to my channel, One Word Emperor Zeta, right here on YouTube. Pick up your drop dead pinups. Electric Night City. Find them on iTunes. Check them out at the Cherry Cola Club here in Toronto next Saturday. And follow them on Twitter at Drop Dead Pinups. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at, at Emperor Zeta. Head down to Excalibur Comics for all of your comic book related needs. And get out of my ozone! <sighs>